Japan has a way of drawing us back time and time again. And for those like us that love driving, Japan has it all. Never-ending highways, deserted racetracks, industrious city streets and lonely country roads. There's an adventure around every corner and sometimes the corner is the adventure. We're back in Japan to pick up a car that I bought sight unseen off the internet. A car that was ahead of its time with an engine that is unique in every way. A machine with timeless design and racing pedigree. Something you'd have on a poster on your wall as a kid because it looked so futuristic. Well, that future is now and I'm about to see it for the very first time. FDRX7 is one of the most iconic two-door Japanese sports cars of all time. It doesn't matter if you're into racing cars, into cruising in your cars, or you're into stuff like Initial D, this is a car that is absolutely bellissimo. And why? Well, one big reason is because it's a rotary with a 13B engine. It flew the flag for rotary engines right up to 2002, and this one is a Series 8, the last one they made. It just turned 20 years old. I think the look is timeless. I think it's really, really held its own for, the, for how old it is, and I absolutely love the colour. So we bought this sight unseen off the internet, as you do, and, uh, and we've just come to pick it up. So what are we going to do? Well, the next couple of days, we're going to be taking a road trip. We're going to be heading all the way to Hiroshima. And in between now and then, we're going to hopefully find some tracks to drive on. We're going to find some highways, going to explore some foods, explore some Japanese culture. And of course, the first thing that you look at when you see this car and you look at it and you see it, you go, you know what we need to do? We need to take it camping. So that's what we're going to do tonight. But first, We've got to go down to our service New South Wales, the Japanese version, to get it registered, get our new number plates, and then we can hit the road. Let's go. Let's do it. Oh, it's so good. Excellent. Let's see if it starts. Go, go, go. Yes. Yeah, let's go. Rotary power, dude. All right, first drive. Here we go. How is it? it feels smooth. Oh, it's good. It's not slow. It feels really tight, actually. It feels yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's 20 years old, but that, that's got plenty of power. Like, that's surprising, actually, how much it does have. There's no, like, creaks or anything? Really comes on at, like, two and a half thousand. Just, you can tell the boost is in. These are twin turbo. Yeah. So, I mean, it works. That's awesome. It's quiet. A lot quieter than I would expect, too. Well, before we do anything else, let's go get our plates. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to head up to a local temple. And then, um, then we're going to hit the highway, mate. That way or that way? Uh, I've, I've, <laughs> maybe we should get a map. Uh, <laughs> oh, that way, that way. It's a huge relief that the car I bought off the internet actually exists and it actually works. Now we have to go and sort out our registration. Oh, smells like an old Mazda. 
So we have arrived at Service New South Wales, uh, Japan edition, uh, to pick up some new plates and get this MAD RX-7 registered. There's a poster here that says, Dame, Dame, uh, loud muffler. Don't, don't, basically. So it's saying, don't have a big can exhaust on your car. Down here, it's got what looks like an S12 or an S13, but it's got a little bonnet scoop and two big Bozo pipes on the back of it. And of course, a similar style uh, motorbike here. And it is saying, don't. Uh, I'll tell you what each of these things says as well. Paparapa, da 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 da, gong, dame, dame. Okay, so to get rid of these old number plates, they've got to go into this machine. So we're going to place one of the plates like that, one of them like that, and oh, now it knows. Uh, yes. Let's just hope yes. Hey! Oh. Remember oh. That? And we need this, and oh, then and apparently now we, we stick that stick there. onto this, which disposes of our old number plates. We submitted our paperwork and got a ticket. And while we were waiting, we realised we have no idea what to say once they actually called our number. So we came up with a plan. She's going to ask me questions. We just nod and say yes to everything, no matter what she says. We say hey, yes. Hey. And then hey. lots of thank And when she stops talking, we say I got that and we walk away. <laughs> Eventually, our number was called and it was time to put our plan into action. Hi, y'all. Hello. Hi. 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 It's funny though, you can just nod and say yes, yeah. and it appears that we might have... We might have regioed a car. Have a car. <laughs> For a country that's known to be so advanced, invents love robots and perfected the rotary engine, there is a lot of old school talking, stamping and paperwork required to simply transfer a car's rego, but I think we may have just done it. I got the... Hi. I'll take that, 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 that. So friendly. <gasps> Dude! One, three, B. 13B, 13B. RX7 that <laughs> represent. Ah, it's so cool. Great success. Very successful people. We've got our plates, we put them on, and then we got a big road trip, people. We've we got a lot of Ks to follow, but we not do. before we stop off and get some curry. Rego in Japan is called Shaken. Costs vary based on the type of car, its usage, and importantly in Japan, its size, with discounts given to microcars, trucks and vans in the K class. Our rear plate will be attached with a special prefecture seal that completely covers one of the bolts to prevent it being tampered with. We're registered and on the road. Over the coming days, if the RX-7 makes it, we're planning to visit racetracks, car shops and hoping to meet up with someone very special in Hiroshima, which is about 500 kilometres away. But before we embark on any of those adventures, we're keen to visit one of our favourite places to eat in Japan, Coco's Curry House. Coco's is a curry restaurant chain and they are nearly everywhere. If you're ever in Japan, you have to stop for lunch because you can customise the spice level and choose from hundreds of different items depending on what you feel like. Oh, thank you for your Coco curry goodness. So satiated. That was so lovely. Look at that! I know! Look at I it. know! I forgot and now I just remembered. I love it so... Dude, what is that place? That is work man. Should we walk over and have a look? We need to look. I don't know what Workman is. I have no idea is. what it is either. It's called Workman Plus. Well, I do work sometimes. And I do work on sometimes. On cars when they're broken a and lot. And I'm a man. Are you? I think so. Oh, dude, look, that's us. That could be you and me. That's you and me. It could actually and be look you and over me. here for all the Volkswagen lovers. I like golf. Oh, dude, they got heaps of mad stuff yeah. in here. Being that we've picked up a small two-door sports car, we've decided to spend the night in the forest alone, so we're getting some important supplies. Look at this, it's mini meat tongs. What's that? A fire blaster. You blow through it oh. and it makes your fire go hectic. Martin, does my table make you hard? What do you mean? Look at this, my hard table. Hard my table. Look at this. We need that. It's a little, it's a little table that you take outside. Hard, mini round stove. Hard my table. This my, looks, my table and hard. This looks very functional. I'm getting that for sure. This is great. What's that? We got everything that we thought we needed, which doesn't look like nearly enough. 
and with Marty getting excited about fishing gear, we heard that a storm was rolling in. We are camping tonight, people. We, we are, are camping in up in the mountains in the RX-7. And I've got my fire blaster. And um, most of the camping stuff, uh, I'm sure, uh, has been left at home. Um, but we have the bare essentials, We've got we? some stuff. And now I'm going to be rainproof. So we've got... Good to go. ...an umbrella. Yep. A pot. Some outdoor wear. And a jacket. A hat. All the essentials for having a good camping experience in Japan. I know as soon as we get to camping, we'll realise we have absolutely nothing that we need, right? Look at that car! Realising that we may not actually survive the night in the mountains in our one-man tent due to storms, bears or each other, we decided to visit a local temple to pay our respects and nourish our spirits. It just so happens one of the best FDRX7s you could ever get was called a Spirit R. Coincidence? I don't think so. The Saihoji Temple in Matsusaka has been run by the Fujita family for generations and they've kindly allowed us to park the RX-7 on their grounds. After topping up our spiritual cups, we now needed the ingredients to top up our physical bellies. This area of Japan is famous worldwide for its local produce, specifically Matsusaka beef, and we've found a place to stock up on supplies for tonight's dinner in the forest. Our car is doing an amazing job. The first few kilometres, it has shown itself to be a very, very nice rotary powered vehicle. Now we are picking up some supplies for our first night camping. We're down here at Matsusaka Beef. So this here is a super, super fancy butcher. Um, the cows are grown uh, just over here, just over the mountain over there. Um, apparently it's very expensive, like $20 per 100 grams. But we are in Japan. We do want to partake in this aspect of the culture that is Matsusaka. So we're gonna go get ourselves some beef. And what we saved on hotel fees by going camping, we spend here. This is some of the most expensive beef in the world, with a single Matsusaka prize cow being worth over $100,000. The pieces we're buying cost around $250 a kilo. With the daylight quickly fading away and thick clouds setting in, we made a dash for the mountains to set up our camp before nightfall and rainfall. While you may not see as many of the JDM hero cars you know and love out on the streets every day, they are still out there, often hiding up in the mountains and in the most unexpected of places. The RX-7 is among good company with these skylines. When you're a king amongst kings, it's nice to park together and sit at the same table. But if you drive a Golf, go park your fridge somewhere else. We'll let you know when we need a cold drink. All right, well, it's just starting to rain, which makes it perfect weather for camping, doesn't it, Martin? Uh, Every time I go camping, it rains. So we've arrived here at the um, camping village. Uh, we got to go check in and uh, pay for our camping spot. Uh, and then I got my big bag down there where we got my uh, got to cook some dinner. tent. And uh, we've got our Matsusaka so beef. So hungry. And um, look, it's going to be a nice night in nature before some more car adventures tomorrow, Martin. So far, so good. This is the Matsusaka Forest Park where we'll be spending the night. Often Japan is portrayed as an industrial hub of never-ending neon cities and suburb-sized factories. But hidden away along a windy country road are gems like this, nestled on the side of a mountain with a waterfall and hiking tracks. 
All right, we've got our charcoal and our barbecue. All set. Uh, and now uh, our camping spot is up there, so we, um, we'll go get the rest of our stuff from the car, get our camping <laughs> get things, on. and then get ready to barbecue <laughs> some Matsusaka beef. I'm excited. It has just started raining, so the sensible thing to do would be to set up our tent and camping gear. But I'm hungry and I have a massive bag of meat. And you also have this delicious shopping bag full of Matsuzaka beef that we bought today. So we're gonna charcoal cook it. Charcoal barbecue, um, full JDM. How do you do it? No idea. No, no. <laughs> we're gonna work it out. You're coming with us, let's do this. In a world that's increasingly full of distraction and overstimulation, all you really need for a great night out is a fire and some time with a mate in nature to hit reset on the ever-growing noise that's all around us. All right, here we go. I'm going to use my fire blaster, which I, uh, I did spend probably 15 Australian dollars on this thing. And you? No, you're, no it's telescopic, dude. Yes! Oh, yep. Yeah. That's working. Yep, no, that's blowing it out, dude. Yep, that was awesome, dude. Well done. Dude, this is bullshit. It doesn't work. No, you don't work. No, you it just... doesn't work. Dude, no. I, look. Fire blaster, dude blasting a fire on the fire, making more fire. Yeah, but you I didn't... blasted it and it went out. You didn't blast it sensitively. You just what went you straight mean? in there and blasted it full force. I blasted exactly like this homie did. Yeah, but his was already it all got, warmed it up. It extends to 53 centimetres, look. Yeah, but his was already warmed up. You can't just blast it straight away. Maybe I just got to keep blasting it. Up. <laughs> no, dude, it's not, it's not, it's not working. Get another yeah. fire lighter. What a dickhead. What a dickhead. Are you supposed to cover it a bit, like, so it actually gets hot? It's not doing anything. Dude, it's adding boost. It's, it's not literally turn. adding it's... boost to a fire. This is how a turbo works on an RX-7. I literally added boost. That's a combustion chamber. I added more air, oxygen, and look what happened. Yeah, that's very good, mate. We went, what? Well done. No, I'm, I'm happy for you, mate. This isn't a fire blower. What? This is a barbecue turbo. Watch. <laughs> oh, dude, it's gone way better now. Now you're actually giving it a proper go. Yeah, look at it go. Boost. That's good. Well done. How do we do this? I have no idea. Okay. Oh, yeah, dude, this is awesome. We're in the woods, Martin, in Japan. Yeah. In my little thing here, put that sauce there, and I'm gonna cook us up some of this meat. Once that thing gets hot, it'll be sweet. There we go, look at that. Here we go, here goes another bit. These micro tongs I've got, are micro tonging very well. I've lost my fork, so now I only have a spoon. Okay, good. That's gonna be rubbish for eating steak. <laughs> How do you eat steak with a spoon? I'm gonna find out. Martin, bon appetit, mate. It's lovely to be out here in the woods with you. This is awesome. And congratulations on your new vehicle. I'm so stoked. What a way to celebrate getting a sick new sports coupe than cooking in the forest with your mate. Kampai, Martin. Cheers. Oh, stop it. Is that one of the best? That's freaking amazing. Mm. We got a big day tomorrow, Martin. Huge we day. We got like 700 kilometers with a few yep. exciting stops along the way. Yep, hopefully. We're not sure what's gonna happen with the weather. We're lucky, it won't be completely belting with rain, but we're gonna do a little bit of expressway driving, mm -hmm. a little bit of back road driving, got a bit of a plan of where to go. Yep. Should be fun, but it's going to be a very early start. Right. Well, finish our meat and get some sleep. We've still got to set up a tent. Yeah, do our tent in a sec. After enjoying an absolutely delicious meal of Matsusaka beef and marshmallows, which was somehow all five food groups at once, it was time to then get ready to spend the night in our one man tent. So, our tent is all set up for the night. We're not like fully equipped to do like proper camping, but we have a tent, a sleeping bag, and a pillow which is all you need for two friends. We're in a country of like 60 million people with some of the most advanced, amazing cities in the world. Yeah. 
We're offsetting, this is your idea of fun. We're offsetting the RX-7's impact on the planet. Is this your idea of fun? This is my idea of fun. Let's That's go, That's my Martin. sleeping bag. Pardon? That's my sleeping bag. That's my pillow. Well, I'll... I think a sleeping bag is more useful than a pillow. <laughs> well, it depends if you want a pillow or not. Because you're going to be cold. I'm Are we going to be cold? We're going head to toe, I think no, we should. No, dude, going head to head. Really? <laughs> your stinky ass near my face. Right. Can you close the thing? Hang on. Close the thing. Close that thing. That thing? Yeah, pull that down. <sighs> All right. Uh, massive storm due in about an hour's time. <sighs> All right, so oh, you do that. pillow. Yeah, you've oh. got your sleeping bag, I've got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, ready to go. Oh, what, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what was that? What? What was, dude, you're gonna attract the bears. Don't be so loud. There's dude. monkeys and bears. <laughs> don't, what is that? Just roll over, dude. What was that? Don't oh, you got bananas from the convino. What are you doing? You get bananas from the convino. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> We survived a cold night in the woods and got back into the FD to head down the mountain. As soon as I turned the key in the RX-7, I was reminded why this thing is so special. The rotariness, the sportiness, and most of all, its willingness to just eat up roads like a convenience store breakfast. Speaking of which, we have no food, not even a spare marshmallow. Unlike Sydney, they don't care about avocado on toast in Japan. Here, it's all about convenience. So we're gonna grab a quick breakfast before a big day on the highway. So after a night in the tent, uh, we have come down to Family Mart for a breakfast. You can pretty much get everything from Family Mart. You can get coffees, you can get imitation crab. You can get absolutely anything you, want a beer you for can breakfast? imagine. You can do it, um, but I don't suggest driving afterwards. Japan has three main convenience stores, Lawson, Family Mart and 7-Eleven. They're usually open 24 hours a day, and with over 50,000 of them across the country, you're never that far from a snack. While they're each similar, there are some differences, like Lawson, which is known for its health food, 7-Eleven for their tuna mayonnaise balls, and Family Mart, which is best known for its fried snacks. I've never had a whole meal before of just meat and marshmallows. That's all we ate so for the good. whole night. Had some pretty trippy dreams, hey. I'm pretty excited to try my sweet potato. And um, it's exactly um, what you would think it is. Just potato? It's a sweet it needs potato. It some mad sauce on it, doesn't mm. it? It's, I mean, it's good. It's a sweet potato. But you got it from a convenience store at the foot of the mountains. Yeah, I mean, where in Australia can you go and get a potato? Cooked ready for you. Any ready time of the day. 24 that's seven. not hot chips. Like, that's amazing. 24-7. I'm just Google translating this. It says stupid rich bukkake, four kinds of flavor. Cool, that's me pretty much. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> strong smell. It's strong? It smell. Uh, oh. Oh. It smells like toes that haven't been washed I was gonna say it smells time. like toe cheese. Yeah, like toes. Yeah. Um, we're doing it, I mean, we've committed. Are you, no, you don't have to, you didn't four buy it. Four cheese bukkake. Oh, you know that, your, your body starts like preparing no, to reject it. Tastes better than it smells. Mm. It's strong, but it tastes all right. <laughs> I'm gonna bukkake my potato. All right, we've had a delicious family mart breakfast. It was awesome. Now it's time to smash a thousand lemons. Cheers, man. Campai. And uh, hit the highway. Campai, Martin. Lovely to be traveling with you. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, Martin. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Oh. Woo! Well, it wakes, it wakes you up, doesn't it? As the rain continues to pour down, we hit the highway heading southwest towards Hiroshima. I reckon this car feels great. It Ooh, feels well. fast, it feels quiet, it yep. feels punchy. It's not making lots of noise. No. The power comes on really nicely, like you just... 4,000 RPM, five and a half. Six, six and a half. And there's still so <laughs> much just more so in much it, much you know? That's too. amazing. And the power stays the same the whole way through the revs, doesn't it? It doesn't yeah. have like a, a very obvious... It doesn't obvious have a big kick, yeah, yeah, but it's, it just feels great. I mean, it's a, it's a shame that it's absolutely bucketing down with rain, but still it's hard to... Hard to let your mood get soggy in a car like this, Martin. It's excellent, I'm loving it, man. I mean, 20 years old, it's not a new car. Yeah. When you're 
road tripping, there's some places you just can't go past. We're here, man. Super Autobacks, and it's a massive one. This is the creative car life store. A must visit if you ever come to Japan. You've yep. just got to. It is just absolutely huge. You notice everybody's backed in. Nobody's nose yeah. in. Every single person is backed is in. We need to do the same, man. Watch my front spoiler. We're just <laughs> mixing it up a bit. While the second-hand parts stores like Up Garage get us the most excited, it's always worth a visit to these huge warehouses that present like automotive nightclubs crammed full of car accessories. So this here is an inner silencer as opposed to an outer silencer. And the idea is that you just keep talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and... When you bring it back out, it all comes back to life, which is... Accessorising your car is hugely popular in Japan. If you've got an older car, the parts are still out there, they're just harder to find. So these parts stores are absolutely massive, but if you're driving something a little bit older like we are, you're not going to find many parts. I went through the whole store and ended up with this, a phone charger, because let's be honest, these days with a phone, you've got your nav, you've got your music, you've got so much stuff that you need, you just need to keep it charged. Luckily, this will interface 20-year-old technology with today. Charge up the phone and hit the road. Electronic tolling exists in Japan, but our toll card reader was broken, so we had to grab a paper ticket to get onto the expressway, and at the other end, we could pay the fee in coins. Lots of coins. All right, so here's my review of an FDRX7 having owned one for precisely 24 hours. It is way smoother than I expected, and I reckon smoother than a piston engine. There's just no getting away from the rotariness of it, and the fact that your power band is so linear, and it's the same. So when you start nailing it at two and a half thousand RPM, the turbos come on, or the turbo comes on, it's got a sequential system on it. But at seven and eight thousand, it feels like the rate of acceleration is the same, even though you're going so much faster, it doesn't feel like you have sort of a torque curve, it just feels like a flat line, which I actually really like, and it makes sense, and I understand why people say rotary power is addictive. The other obvious thing is that it's really squashy in here, like there's no room, there's no room for your stuff, and there's barely room for a six foot person. So it's quite high waisted up here, but it does have that nice feeling of like the car is sort of swallowing you up and holding you in. The gear shift is, gear shift is really nice, the steering's really nice. This particular one's got a little knock in the back, which I understand is actually quite common in FDs as well, so no surprises there. The aircon works, it's all pretty good, probably needs a wheel alignment. What would I do to it if I had a workshop full of stuff and some parts? I'd put some bushings in the back, check all that. I'd get a wheel alignment, put some new tyres on it, and then just drive it, because everything else feels really, really good. Every other hour, you're driving past another huge city, but often you won't even see it as you dive through another long tunnel or fly over an overpass. We happened to drive past the Daihatsu factory in Kyoto, where on a previous trip to Japan, I got some parts from my mirror. If your rotary is running as well as ours is, it's probably smashing through the fuel, so it was time to fill up. Actually pretty surprised how economical this thing has been on the highway. Um, we've got just under half a tank, we've done 250 k's roughly, so at that rate, 400 k's to a tank would be pretty amazing. I know it's different when you're on little uh, roads in the city, but we're going to fill it up because we are about 100 and something k's away from our destination and when we get there we're going to need plenty of fuel. Why are we going to need plenty of fuel, Martin? You'll see. Uh, red is regular, yellow is high octane, green is diesel, so we want the high octane. For oh, they're weird looking beast. gun looking things. Aren't they? Does it the... auto go as well? Don't think so. I think you got to hold it, unless that's like a triggery thing. No, you got to hold it. Some places you go to, they'll come up and they'll put the fuel in for you. They take your garbage. They clean the windscreen. I think because we're kind of in the middle of nowhere now, it's just kind of a little bit of a DIY situation. I think so. Um, also but, um, have to stick a card in to make it yeah, work. Get the job my card done. Go? There. Is it going in, man? It will when I put money in. What money in first? I think you got to yeah, and you go oh, fill that's up. That's right. That's Premium. Lucky. Fill up. Go card. Go. Remove card. See, normally in Australia what happens is you fill your car up and then it charges you for it, but then other places in fueling. Is Go it, for it. Is it doing it? It will. Yeah, man, we're happening. There we go. Look how fast it goes. It's about 200 yen a litre, so... That's that there is, I reckon, 10 times as fast as fuel going in in Australia. Normally it's one litre, two litre, three litre. And the cost is not much different. It's a little bit more than home, but not a lot more at current prices. So running a rotary, expensive. Worth it? 
Yes. Uh, a love story that might be. We wasn't supposed to happen. So much talk around us. We became numb to the yapping. It was like 05. Got my license to drive. Picked you up in my pops car. Went for a ride. Couldn't no one tell us nothing. That night was ours. All the stars aligned and you were so damn fine. Yeah. It was young love. Young hearts were so pure. We trust love. It's so hard to endure. A few years passed. Made the move out west. It became harder to maintain. It put us to the test. I hope you know I did my best. Every birthday. In Christmas, scraping up every penny, eating dinner for breakfast. Restless, but you left me so breathless. Every time you smiled and looked into my eyes, I used all the corny lines I wrote for you a dozen times. My pen dancing on this paper in your room of mine. We are here at Nakayama Circuit, which is about an hour or so out of um, Hiroshima, and it is completely deserted. It's bizarre. There is nobody here at all. We just came down and said, hey, can we come on the track? And they're like, yep, go for it. It looks like a ghost town, it totally really deserted. There's weeds over everything, everything's overgrown. But it's kind of awesome too, isn't it? I mean, it is kind of awesome. All the signs are rusty and they look like they're made in the 60s. I mean, the track and the track's really interesting. Very Huge strange. elevation change, wide, but there's just trees as you run off, some guardrails. Like it's really, I've never seen anything like it in my life, but I like it. I just, I just, I want to see. Can I see? Can I see if it'll do it? Uh, there's a lot of walls around, but give it a go. Just want to see if it'll do a donut. Ready? Here we go. Oh. <laughs> yes! It does a donut! Whoa. Oh, yes! Awesome, man! The main straight is like up a hill and then into a hard wall. And about 150 metres long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what a funny little track. So cool. So cool just to come down. We need more stuff like this where you can oh. just go to a track and go, hey, just want to use it for a little bit. Whoa, let's go. <laughs> That's unreal. All right, we're going to go find our accommodation, get some food, and then tomorrow we're taking this car to a very, very special place to meet a very, very special person. The car feels a little unpredictable when trying to get it sideways on the slippery circuit, which we think might be a power delivery issue. So we found an open area to do some scientific testing. We're going to find somewhere to stay for the night and get ready for tomorrow because we'll be heading to Hiroshima, which is where our Mazda was made. And we're planning on meeting someone who is involved in the creation of our RX-7. We pushed on with some more Highway Ks and then pulled off into a small town and found a Ryokan, a traditional Japanese hotel where you sleep on mats on the floor. The tranquility was only broken by the sound of the two rotor 13B firing up at sunrise. Good morning, everybody. We are now on our way to Hiroshima. We are. We're about an hour out. I don't know exactly the name of the place we've just stayed in, but it is stunning. It's in a valley. It's like little hotels and houses dotted along and farms. It's like your typical sort of semi-rural looking area. Love it. If you come to Japan, make sure you come and check out an area like this because it's just so different from the big cities. We are going to uh, get on the highway 
and then find a Lawson or a 7-Eleven or something to get some uh, breakfast Roadside and then uh, kick on to Hiroshima where we have we got a very very exciting person to meet Martin and I'm, uh, I'm a little bit excited me too Hiroshima was founded in 1589 originally as a castle town by the river now it's a thriving city of around 1.1 million people and it's known for its art culture and amazing food the Memorial Peace Park here draws in thousands of visitors from all around the world each year to pay their respects to the lives lost during the atomic bombing. Hiroshima is also the birthplace of Mazda. And while components for Mazdas come from all over Japan, their main manufacturing plant is here, where they have been producing vehicles since 1920. The plant covers nearly 1.7 square kilometres, with the nearby port distributing cars all over the world straight from the front door. Over 30% of the entire city's gross domestic product is because of this one company. Industry and export like this is what has made Japan an economic powerhouse. We're grabbing another convenience store breakfast and then we're on our way to Mazda. I saw a cream, pineapple and kiwi fruit sandwich. That was a thing. Anyway, today... Breakfast of champions. What are we doing lemons. here, Martin? We are going to Mazda because I wrote to Mazda on Instagram and said, can we come? And they went, yes. Mm. <laughs> What's going to happen? So here we are. Um, we don't know. We don't know exactly. Fingers crossed something good. The day will be kicked off though with 1,000 lemons. Oh. You ready, Martin? I'm not sculling it, man. No, you got a Nunday, I want to Nunday, enjoy Nunday. it. I want to enjoy Nunday. it. Nunday, Nunday. What's that? I'll enjoy it. Drink, drink, drink. Really? Alright, ready to go. Man. Let's do it. I've no idea where to go, so we're just going to drive till we see a big Mazda logo and hope we're in the right spot. I saw a big Mazda logo before. Yeah. Yep, go, 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 go. It looks so um, grand and so vast when you're on the expressway coming into town, but then once you're in town, it's like. Yeah. Sort of buried in it. But I do see Mazda logos everywhere, so I think we're in the right place. Oh, dude, zoom zoom. That yeah. sign says zoom zoom. I wonder if I should tell them that I wrote the Mazda Zoom Zoom music in Australia for quite a few years. I think you probably should. We've arrived at Mazda's main headquarters and were met by Nobuhiro Yamamoto, a legend within Mazda circles who's been involved with rotaries for decades and worked on the FDRX7 project. We are down here in Hiroshima at Mazda with Yamamoto-san. He's worked at Mazda as an engineer for over 40 years and is now an ambassador. Thank you very much yeah, for having us down here today. Yeah. My friend is so excited. Very excited. <laughs> He's so excited. <laughs> Thank you for coming Welcome. and seeing us. All right, what can you tell us about uh, this project? And did we buy a good one or a bad one? Please let us know because we bought this off the internet. We have never seen it. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> please have a look and let us know if it's okay. Yeah, 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 I think so. Oh, this is a lovely car for Mazda. This is a, or number one is RX-7 RX and number two, MX-5. <laughs> yes, okay, so your, your heart is with the RX-7, but you also love MX-5s? Yes. I'm the same. Yes, exactly. Great. Um, you worked on the rotary engine for many years. Yeah. And it was it was big in racing. What experience yeah. did you have with racing? Yes, of course. I work on Master 22 years for rotary engine development. And also, basically, I'm a rotary engine engineer. Yeah. Uh, I, this is FD. Uh, FD is very, very uh, important for mm. me. And also, we are... Uh, and also, we are racing uh, designer for rotary engine. Mm -hmm. As you know, uh, 1991, Guma 7A7B over yes. the wing. This is I drawing this rotary engine. And also, this FD is very important mm -hmm. for Mazda. Pure rotary sports car. This is a nice car. Do you think there's something about the spirit of this car that is very uniquely Japanese? Like, yeah. what is it about the FDRX7? that gives it its special spirit. Yeah, yes, I think so, yeah. This is, we call uh, must and also Rotary Fund say, never stop challenge. This is, world is very important. Our X7 is, I said, pure uh, sports car. Very beautiful styling, and very compact body, and very nice handling. Yes. So this is Rotary engine special. Yeah, RX-7. 
and it looks like a supercar. Yes. <laughs> it looks so special. It's so long. Yes. And the cabin is yes. so small, you feel like you're in a spaceship. Yes. Yes. You're right. <laughs> I hope so. How do, you, exactly. how do you feel about people modifying yeah. RX-7s? Yes. Customer is very, very uh, modified. Yeah. But another part, and suspension, and also rotary engine. Yes. Many customers is modified tuning. And also, rotary engine is very high performance for modify. Mm. As you know, changing turbocharger and changing intake system, another and the exhaust system are changing. Mm. Rotary engine increasing more power. Yeah. Power. This is very uh, interesting engine. Can I ask you uh, one question before we finish here? I'm wondering, what do you love the most? Bus styling. Yes, that is very important. I, I love it. RX-7 is styling is the number one. Styling, styling. Yeah. yes. yes. It, it's very, very it it's beautiful. Very, very cute, very beautiful. Yeah. So. Did you say cute, kawaii? No, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> kakkoi. Oh, kakkoi. <laughs> kakkoi. What does kakkoi mean? Kakkoi, kakkoi is uh, great, great beauty. Right? Oh, great, <laughs> great beauty, right. yes, not great kawaii. Beauty. How different do you feel an RX-7 is to your other invention? Uh. <laughs> like, where, what's the, what do you feel is different? Or what do you like about them? So, uh, RX-7 is a pure sports car, mm -hmm. and sport driving is very pure and high speed. Yes. High speed cornering. Yep. But MX-5 is very important thing, fun to drive. Yes. Very right weight. Yes. And very low inertia weight, very handling, smiling. Mm -hmm. But RX-7 is steering feel, steering driving scene, not smiling, very serious. Yes. Serious. That's the best way I've ever heard <laughs> MX5 it described. MX5 is happy. Yes. RX7 scared. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Very serious. I think that's very important that we talk about cars being fun and making you smile, yeah, yeah. because everybody is talking numbers, horsepower, numbers, do 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 do. Kilowatts. But track a car times. is a car is not paper. You know, a car mm. is the smile, yeah, yeah, it's yes. the emotion. Yes, exactly. Yes, I think so. Yes, very important. So, MX-5 is a very simple concept. Very lightweight, very compact, low enough. Uh, this is a nice handling car. Mm. That is not fast, not cornering speed. Mm -hmm. That is very fun to drive, it's very important. Just smiling. <laughs> fun to drive and smile, people. Fun to drive and smile. <laughs> I'm smiling. I'm having fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was so nice to meet you. Yamamoto-san offered to take us on a personal tour of the Mazda factory and museum. <laughs> So this here is the famous Mazda 787B car that won Le Mans in 1991, the first Japanese car ever to win and powered by a rotary. It started in 19th place and 21 hours into the 24 hour race, uh, it moved up into first position, uh, ultimately winning the race and powered with a rotary. And it kind of cemented rotary as being like an actual serious contender and showing how much power, but also the endurance that's required for a 24 hour race. And this next to me, is the 26B, which is absolutely famous. They've been remade since because people just love them so much. Um, it's basically a 700 horsepower engine. And you can see even as far back as 1991, there's like very much racing car. You've got carbon fiber, you've got these linkages, you've got huge ignition system, which at the time would have been cutting edge. And uh, even say 700 horsepower,
horsepower is pretty impressive. Dry sump, all the race car stuff, but the car made it and really cemented itself in history. This is the actual car. There are replicas getting around, but this is the actual car. I'm a girl. idea of the scale of a car manufacturer in a place like Japan. So we started over here. I think our car is parked here. We are currently all the way over here. That's still Mazda down here in the port where the cars go. And over here, yep, that's still Mazda. So when I said it's the size of a suburb, maybe it's the size of a couple of suburbs. Absolutely enormous. It's such a treat to check out the Mazda Museum, particularly to see those old original rotaries and meet an engineer who was on the actual project. And this is his baby as well, and he daily drives the ND MX-5, which is pretty cool. Now, because we are in Hiroshima, tonight we're going to try some Okonomiyaki, which is Hiroshima style. It's a slightly different style. And then I've booked us some very special accommodation. So this one here, chopped. Wow. I mean, chop. Chop. It means you win the race. Win the race. Chop, chop. Chop. Win yes. So when you wow. drive past somebody uh -huh. and you go boop, 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 and then you say chopped chop. out the window. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much for your time. It was very nice to meet you. And well done on the beautiful car. <laughs> Thank you. We've just finished at the Mazda factory, and it's time to burst the bubble of this dream, people. There's something wrong with this car. Can you hear it? Like at low speed, it's particularly noticeable. There's something wrong with the rear end. It's just clunking and knocking around like crazy. Badly. Uh, now, we've just had a look, and there is a performance workshop here in Hiroshima. We're just going to rock up and see if we can try and get our car looked at. Off. Oh, I'll listen to that. Just get it up on a hoist and see what's going on. Listen here when we go over this. Yeah, hear that? Yeah. Something rooted. Anyway, we're going to see if we can go get it fixed. It's hard when you buy a new car and you want it to be perfect, just like the dream. But we still have lots of distance to cover and we don't want to get stuck on the side of the highway, so we need to check it properly. We are at Car Shop Claudia in Hiroshima. Uh, it's a dealership, uh, but they also do performance cars. There's RX-7s, there's Evos here, but most importantly, they have got a workshop uh, and the mechanics there have said that we can hopefully use that for a couple of minutes to see if we can find out what's wrong with our car. So we're gonna go and meet the owner now, tell him what the problem is, and then hopefully get the car up on the hoist. Find a spot on a hoist, which is gonna make a huge difference in working out exactly what is wrong with this thing. Fingers crossed. Nice workshop. Super clean. This would be where they'd be doing all the services and stuff, I think. It's always astonishing the variety of cars that you'll find in a car yard in Japan. Car Yard Claudia had everything from Evos to Golfs, Hummers to supercars, and luckily they know about rotaries too. Because these cars have been around for so long, and particularly because they're released in Australia, Japan, America, all over the place, there's a lot of info out there for them. So I had a bit of a quick look, and a rear end clunk in these is quite common. That said, what I didn't realize is we've also got coilovers in there, so that could also be the culprit. I'm just trying to work out, get under there and have a kind of shake everything around and see what's going on. But most likely it's gonna be suspension arm related because those bushings do wear out, but those coilovers could also be 15 years old and be badly in need of a rebuild and it could be those two, so we'll see. The mechanic helped us isolate the source of the noise, which was coming somewhere from the rear end, particularly noticeable at low speed over bumps. Of course, RX-7s don't spend much time at low speed, so it didn't dampen our spirits all that much and we were okay to keep driving. We're pretty sure that it's pillow ball mount. Uh, the mechanic who works here reckons it is. 
and uh, when you grab the wheel and move it, you can sort of feel if you hold this arm, you can feel it making noise. Their pillow ball mounts, it was super adjustable and good, but they do wear out and if they've never ever been replaced, then chances are that's what's making the noise. So we can see if we can try and find some. It's not, the car drives fine, but it, it does affect when you're really at speed. We noticed on the track particularly that it just does sort of some weird stuff because the rear end is not as tight as it should be. Now importantly, like so many JDM cars, it's got an earthing kit where it's attached a little bit of metal to some wires to the various parts of the engine. Uh, it doesn't really do anything unless your earthing system's already broken. But more importantly for a rotary, we need to keep an eye on the oil level. Um, and we're looking pretty good. We are just under full on the stick. Just gotta keep an eye on it. Uh, it does have some kind of oil leak. I'm not sure if it's power steering or oil, but it's a little bit damp under there. Um, I know this was a little bit smelly when it gets hot, so that's probably what it is, but nothing, nothing major and again, We've only got a couple of days here in Japan, so could spend two days messing with it or could just drive it through the beautiful mountain roads, which is what we're going to do. There are many ways to get around Japan. Train and bike is good, RX-7 is better. Or you can even take an electric suitcase like this guy if that's your thing. We're on our way to the Peace Park, which is the site of the atomic bomb blast from World War II. On the 6th of August 1945, a US bomber dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, the first time a nuclear weapon has ever been used on a city with absolutely devastating consequences. And the building behind us, the remains of the building behind us, is the Hiroshima Prefectural Industrial Promotion Hall, and it's been left here as a reminder of what can happen if things get that bad. The USA detonated atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing hundreds of thousands of people, mostly civilians. This dome is a symbol not only to the terrible effects of human's most powerful weapon, but also a symbol of hope, to stand for peace and make sure that such a weapon is never used again. It was incredibly moving to spend some time in the Peace Park, but now it's time to get back on the road. And I reckon we should go and hit up a cafe. And Japan does cafes better than anyone, I reckon. Well, Martin, not only do they do cafes, you can go to a cafe where there's cats, yep. and where there's soft music, and you just get a snack and feed a cat. Sounds good. It sounds pretty good. Now, sounds I've found a couple of them here. Um, this one's called Cat Cafe, not a super creative name, um, but they've got a good, a good score here. We loved it. You can get treats for the cats. They love the treats. Any reviews on it? Lovely cats. It's a small room. Okay. And then this dickhead. It's a small room with cats. The cats were lazy and not much fun. <laughs> you man. Give, he gave a cat, he gave the, the cat two stars. He gave a cat a shit review. He gave a cat a shit review. What a dickhead. Who does that? What an absolute dickhead. What's this person the saying? The cat was lazy. <laughs> I tried to touch the cat, it ran away. If I touched it, paws. If I touched its paws, I would get punched by cat. So I planned to stay for an hour, but I left after 30 minutes. There was only one friendly cat. The person who came in after me was reading a manga at the edge without paying attention to the cat. I wondered if this is how regulars spend time there. Every time the owner leaves the seat, the cats gather and say, is it food? Then cat punch me. <laughs> we have to go. Can we please go? Yes, it sounds so to. good. A cat cafe is a space where you can literally spend time with cats. And some cafes are themed around a specific breed or species. In Japan, these venues have to conform with strict welfare and hygiene guidelines. You pay an hourly fee, which lets you into the space with the animals. We ignored the reviews saying that the tiny room was hot, smelly and paid our fee to enter. Inside we found ourselves sitting on electric blankets with elderly Japanese women and a menagerie of cats of all shapes and sizes. Um, There's kittens. You can groom the cats, put little hats on them. Yep. I'll be honest, it's very strange. Very strange, but uh, yeah, somehow quite peaceful and relaxing. And alluring. Yes. yes. Where to next? <laughs> Our hotel. Feeling nicely regurgitated, I mean rejuvenated, it was time to go and relax our body banana at a love hotel. And there's that guy again, still riding on his suitcase. 
was chat. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> cat cafe, more like chat twice. cafe. And twice. <laughs> and the first vomit was huge. From the top of the bookshelf, it went down, touched the front of the bookshelf, caught the vomit on the side, and then landed in the shrine. Dude. And then the other cats came and ate it. <laughs> I couldn't stay. And then he kept going, dude. I couldn't After stay. Left, I know going. it was disrespectful. I had to leave with only one shoe on. He was less was than a meter like, from my face. Oh, dude. I couldn't. I just, I couldn't even be there. It. it was so awkward. The woman's going, ah. Uh, anyway, driving around Hiroshima is awesome. It's so picturesque. It's like the autumn leaves and the river. Uh, this is us here, Martin. So, that. we're done. Wait, that? Yes, this is where we're staying for tonight. So, basically, there should be a curtain. See that? See the blue curtain? Yeah. Yeah, we're going in there. Why does it have curtains? No is this to, like, clean the top of your car or something? Yeah, here we go. And then, go up here, go straight ahead, and we're yeah. just going to cover the number plates. Okay. Keep going up. Yep, that's it. Why? Good. Why does everyone have their plates covered? Good job, mate. All right, let's go check out our room. All right, so just come down here and there should be a little... Yep, here we go, grab one of these. How do you know this? And that just covers the number plate. Why? So no one knows we're... So no one knows we're here. Look, you don't have your number plate on display. Here we go, look at this. So the ones that are lit up mean that they're available. Right. So we can see, I mean, some of them are like really crazy themed. Look at this one. one. This one's got like a fish on it. See that? Like a fishy kind of situation okay. over there. Love hotels offer accommodation with rooms that are available to hire by the hour. Their purpose is to allow couples some time together after work, during work or on the weekend to have a nice conversation. So this is Hotel Banana. Uh, just their slogan is get relax for your body banana. Or a six. We should be quiet because there might be people eating bananas right now. Come on, say. Four or six. Uh oh. We've just called our friend who speaks Japanese who's translating for us. Oh, okay. Um, we, can you tell him we don't want to have sex? We're making a documentary. We have been denied a room at Hotel Banana Relax Your Body. Uh, so we will um, we'll have to go somewhere we'll else, somewhere Martin. Else, yeah. No Hotel Banana for us tonight. All right, so it turns out that if you're a guy, you can't share a room with another guy, which I think is a little bit, um, I don't know, a let's bit be, Let's be real, it's discriminatory. It is. I feel discriminated because against. Because if I was a woman, we could go in there, even if we were just going to cuddle or talk. Yes. But we can't talk or cuddle because we are both men. Yes. Don't. I kind of want to win. No. <laughs> but I don't know if I want to win that badly, but like, you know what I'm getting at, don't you? Well, like I have, th there's, there's ways. We soon gave up on the Love Hotel idea and found something else, but this one had a massive downside. So we've found a hotel with way less bananas, but the only thing it has not is no going parking. for it is parking. <laughs> so apparently if you want to park, we have to park in a stacker. Not a great history well, with those. Not a great history with them. And as soon as the word stacker was mentioned, um, I started to get flashbacks. But it can't happen twice, surely. Surely a stacker can't fail twice and lock my car up. When you can't go out, you go up. High-rise automated car stackers are an efficient way of storing lots of cars in not much space, as long as they actually work. So we're just checking with a ruler to make sure your lip will fit in there. Good. <laughs> Through a combination of charades, Pictionary and Cars Against Humanity, we got some bad news. I think they're saying the car is too low, but I'm going to try and bribe him um, to see if they will let the car in. Giving gifts is an integral part of Japanese culture, particularly in business transactions, which is what this was. It turns out the simple gift of a banana unlocked the ability to be able to store our car overnight. And as we wouldn't be needing this banana because we got denied entry at the Banana Hotel anyway, it was a good use of fruit. Why is he holding a banana? Uh, because they weren't going to let us in unless um, I did something and the best thing that I had to offer at that point in time was a banana. 
Japan's cities are bustling day and night, and searching for a meal here is an adventure in itself. Much like the car stackers, sometimes the good stuff is on the upper floors. These buildings can house hundreds of tiny different little restaurants and small business that manage to carve out a living making delicious food for locals and tourists alike. More often than not, these retail and restaurant areas fan out from the train stations in the middle of town, meaning there's an endless number of places to see that are all easily explorable. We decided to visit Okonomi Village, a collection of open plan restaurants all under one roof. Come down to Hiroshima to find some Okonomiyaki. We finally found some, we had to walk around a lot. Uh, there's a lot of them, but you've got to find a good one. And we have, and this gentleman invited us in, and said he's going to cook us some amazing stuff. So that's what we're going to do. We've got ourselves a little menu here. English menus, you can always ask for them. They often do have them, which is super helpful. And it's basically four floors of economy Economiyaki. So many. Uh, and we just picked one where the guy looked friendly. And uh, now we're going to order some. Hiroshima is famous for a specific style of Economiyaki, which is a tasty noodle pancake made with cabbage, bean sprouts, meat and seasoning which is then cooked on a hot plate right in front of your eyes. Surprisingly, it's not fast food in the traditional sense. The chef carefully cooks a batch for everyone all at once, customising each one to order. It takes approximately 30 minutes to prepare, customise and cook. Once finished, Hiroshima style sauce is brushed on top and then you can cut it and eat it with a metal spatula directly off the hot plate in front of you. They have arrived, enjoying a little cup. Got to do a big solid Amazing. cup. So our chef here, this is his grandfather's place, and uh, he's been working here for years, so he would have made thousands and thousands of these. Oh, it's, it's on a hot, it's left hot. And, and then you just you eat it off this hot, um, off this little hot plate here. Absolutely delicious. So, mm. Oh, shit. That's excellent. Get one. So good. Get one. We had an awesome night out we in did. Hiroshima getting the most delicious okonomiyaki I've ever had. It was great. Meanwhile, the RX-7, we, we understand, has safely been stored in this car stacker. Now, last time we safely stored our car in the car stacker, it was the Super Turbo, and it was safely stored in there for a lot longer than we'd anticipated. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, getting anxious thinking about it. We lost like half a day because it got stuck in a stacker and the engineer was like, Ugh. so cross my fingers and hope that with this magical card, a magical car will be restored to us. Here we go. No, that's not ours. That's no, not ours. That's someone else's thing. There was a whole lot of talking and button pushing, but not much RX-7. These machines are complex and used hundreds of times each day. And as we learned, they do break. After an excruciating wait, finally our car was delivered back to us. Today we're going to be driving a couple of hundred kilometres to a meet-up at a racetrack. But before we leave the city, we wanted to check out one of Hiroshima's most iconic temples. This is Mitaki Dera. It's a Japanese temple in Hiroshima that was founded in the year 809. Its name originates from the three waterfalls that run down the steep mountain trail. sometimes as fast as the world is mm. and as fast as our cars are mm -hmm. sometimes it's nice just to stop isn't it absolutely just stop because the world is constantly buzzing at you and making noises at you and yes. particularly that's evident in Japan because there's the lights city. and there's dang, 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 yeah. dang, dang, dang. everything's trying to get your attention to try and sell you something but what happens when you just stop I think it's interesting too that people spend so much time running from the bear I've got to run because if I stop, I might have to contemplate mm. that uh, sometimes you just need to. Although, all I would say is, walking up here, we walked past a sign that said there's bears. Yeah. And metaphorically speaking, instead of running from the bear, you could run to the bear because when you get to the bear, it's just an angry version of yourself, needs a hug. <laughs> 
Shall we go do some skids now? Absolutely. We couldn't take our car to a meet with it so filthy, so we stopped off for some fuel, supplies, and a quick clean. So I said, hi, Ok. Hi, Ok. Hey. Cardo? Bill. Yes. Thank you so much. What a legend. Turned off now, so your turbo timer's got time to turn off because you might not want to pop your last test. Does anyone like turbo timers? I understand that the reasoning for them when you've been thrashing the car, but when we've just been cruising, like I don't need to run it. Well, there's meant to be, you should be able to turn it off. Dude. Yeah, if you do that, it goes longer. Does it really? If you press anything, it goes for longer. Oh. Three, come on. Five, four, three. Yeah, it's annoying two, when you don't want it. One. Yes. When you go to a service station in Japan, it means actual service. The amount of pride and attention to detail here is like nothing we've ever seen anywhere in the world. Something as simple as the ritual of putting fuel in the car or cleaning it up is something they take a huge amount of pride in. The kind of life that I could survive in time When you go five or six degrees this morning very cold and we're off the highways and into the mountains it's a beautiful autumn morning and yeah we're off the highways it's all these twisty b roads this is what this car is made for it just comes into its own it's so sharp and precise it's so much fun all the power that you need and we're on our way to a festival well not a festival the mazda festa we don't know what that means exactly but we're on our way to mazda festa Racetrack is one thing, but these sort of country roads with no one on them, twisty up in the mountains is like, I think it's my favorite kind of driving there is. Yeah. You're on your way to somewhere, you're gonna see some things, you're gonna have an adventure. You're not just going around in circles and the car just responds so well to everything. It stops, it goes, it handles. It's just awesome. We've arrived at Okayama Circuit for the annual Mazda Festival. Sneakers 
quite a few manufacturers in Japan are doing now is restoring people's original cars. There's a couple of manufacturers doing it, I believe Nissan are doing it, you can buy a whole bunch of remanufactured parts. Also Mazda are doing it particularly with the early model, model roadsters but interestingly for us also FTRX and classic Mazda restoration. It blows my mind that after all these years you can then go and buy remanufactured parts. So we're talking uh, rotor housings, rotors, all the little stuff that breaks after time, which it just stops that stuff getting so expensive that people don't bother with the cars anymore or, or too scared to take them out, knowing you can get them. They've got a whole shell of an FD here. Now, I don't know exactly how far they'll go with a customer's one or whether it's not an example of what you can do, but um, them remanufacturing parts from the factory, original parts, is a pretty awesome way to be able to restore your FD. So we've had a good look around the Mazda Fan Festa. It's more like a Miata Festa, isn't it? There's, just, there's so many MX-5s and Roadsters here. It Roadster is out Festival. of control. It kind of makes sense because unlike the RX-7, which stopped being made 20 years ago, these have been made consistently the whole way through. So there's people with mad little track cars that are having a good day out. A couple of rotaries scattered throughout the place as well and doing demo laps and sort of cruising around the track, which is pretty awesome. And what we do see is there is a very distinct style to the way that the cars are modified to be on Absolutely. the track. So they're pretty much all on semis. Yep. Uh, everyone's got like roll bars, everyone's in their full race suits, Aftermarket the cars wheels. are stickered up. They're all on 15 by eights, like yep. it's yeah, very, And very in consistent. some of the older cars that we saw, they are kind of running power FCs and stuff. It just, it's funny, you know, Japan has been this kind of, there's like old school and new school at the same time. You know, sometimes you go and try and buy something at the shop and they don't take pay pass. They're like, we don't do that but then there's robots serving you in other restaurants. And then you go outside and there's fax machines and CD shops. But then the fastest, some of the fastest Wi-Fi and internet in the world also at the same time. It's so it's strange. It's very confusing. But this, all this track stuff has got me in the mood for doing some driving. Yes, and unfortunately we don't have an MX-5 so we can't hit the track right here. But there is a little track that we visited the other day that is not far from here. I suggest we go back there, Martin, and belt out a few laps of our own. Sounds so good. Let's do it. While our time in Japan has nearly come to an end, the story of this car is just beginning because we have space booked on a ship to bring this thing back home with us to Australia. The drive to the port leads directly past Nakayama Circuit and I felt like I had unfinished business with this car. So after a drive back through the highways, up some mountains and onto some B roads, it's time to stretch the legs of this awesome sports car just like the original engineers intended. Oh, this is a different thing in the drive. Whoa! Very cool. Here we go, full sand RX-7, 6,000 RPM, 7. Oh, this is fast. Fantastic. What a fun circuit. <laughs> yes, this is brilliant. This is so good. Oh, this is so responsive. Even with kind of crappy old tires and not the most amazing suspension setup, it's hanging on. Just loving it. That could go very badly. Getting a bit sideways over there. Oh, this corner's tight. Whoa, this is fast. It's exactly what Yamamoto Sun was saying. Really responsive, feels really alive. You feel like you can really thrash it and really break hard or break at the last second. I don't even really need to look at what revs my engine's at because it's kind of always there, ready to go. Yeah, unreal, this is so cool. Driving a Japanese circuit in a car made for this, just so cool, so, so cool. Ideally, we'd have two RX-7s to race, but because we don't, we've got these. Two tiny little JDM nuggets that are ready to throw down in a mighty battle of miniature proportions, a Nissan Micra and a Daihatsu SA. When we made Turbos and Temples 1 over 10 years ago, we ended our story on track in a tiny little car, so it makes sense to do it all again. What better way to spend our final hours in Japan? We've come back today and the track day has a total of two cars here. Uh, these kind gentlemen um, have very, very generously said to us that we can take their cars for a lap. So we have a K12 Micra here that is thoroughly modified and used as a daily. And we've got a Daihatsu Essay. Yeah. Essay? 
Is that what it's called? <laughs> Daihatsu Eshe. Is that, is that what it's called? I hope it's called a Daihatsu Eshe, bro. That'd be so um, good. But a, a Daihatsu Eshe. So how many of the uh, gets what? Well, Martin, you're the micro guy. But you're the Nissan guy. Well, I know. I so own two Daihatsu. Okay, here, here we go. Are you ready? All right. Scissors, paper, rock. Boom. I'm taking the Daihatsu. You can take the Nissan Micro I'm because actually, you are Mr. I'm Nissan so Micro. I'm fine with it. Uh, and uh, is that supercharged? It sounds whiny. I think it is. Uh, and this one here is quite thoroughly naturally You're gonna aspirated. Get so bad. So uh, anyway, we're going to hit up the circuit. We'll have the whole circuit to ourselves. We said to them, do we need helmets or anything? And they're just like, take it nah, easy. Nah, don't worry about it. So um, yeah. Anyway, a massive thanks to the to the guys for letting us use their cars. Uh, and now um, Daihatsu dominance. Here we go, people. Let's do this. Daihatsu dominance. No one's ever said that and meant it. That's true. Can you believe just coming to another country and just going to a track day and saying, is it okay if we drive your cars and them just handing the keys over? What a bunch of legends. That is awesome. We will have a nice, uh, a little battle with the little Micra and the Daihatsu Eshe. <laughs> I cannot think of two better nuggets to have on a mad little grassroots circuit in the mountains of Japan. He's like, I'm just going to take it easy on the first lap. Yeah, he's not going to take it easy. What an absolute nugget. I think that thing's going to handle exceptionally well. I can see like three degrees of camber on the front. But this thing feels like it's got some go and it'll definitely have a bigger engine. <laughs> this is excellent. What an absolute nugget, but it's great. I absolutely love this. I'm in a little Daihatsu racing a Micra in Japan. This is awesome. He's going to be 10 tenths commitment on this because that's just how he is. All right, remember my racing lines. Let's go, here we go, little Micra. Come on, let's go. This is so good. I'm right on his ass. <laughs> yes. Oh, he's revving it so hard. I am having the best time. This is unreal. <laughs> I'm gonna chop him so bad. Oh, Marty's coming down in the micro. I think he's gonna take me on the inside. He's got me. Jump. He's got me. <laughs> Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Mike Lavola. Come go. on. <laughs> he's got oh, me. Got him. Chopped. Such. Oh, that's a corner. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna make sure he can't get past me. Here's what I know about Marty. He's gonna break earlier than me. Watch this. Brakes, now I'm brakes, yeah. There we go. He's on the brakes again, not me. Here we go. Come on, Daihatsu Eshe. Let's go, let's go. I'm on him so hard. I'm on him so hard. Oh, the downhill's yeah. gonna help him yeah. here. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> This is heavy. Oh, I'm gonna catch you, mate. Here we go, up the inside, up the inside. Power up the inside! Oh, got him up the inside! <laughs> yes! That was a sick race. That was awesome. Incredible to be here in Japan driving these awesome cars. And in a sense, I think these cars really do represent what most of the people are driving who are driving these cars in Japan. We spoke to these guys before about what are their daily cars and they're like, this is it, like this is the daily cars. They're not only using these every day, but they're driving these cars to the track and on the track. That was sick. That was great. I will defeat all in my Nissan. Yeah. What a mad track. So good. Just the sun going down in the mountains. Me and my mate into nugget JDM cars, like as JDM as it actually gets. Full track car spec. This thing's really fun. Really fun, just like all my micros. And it was the winner. What? Nissan is undefeatable. The winner? I slowed down to let you go past no, it. No, you didn't. I won. Dude, I slowed down what are you so you could go about? past. You did not. Yeah, I, I was did. coming around the inside and beat you no, but at I, the bottom corner. Yeah, I slowed down so I could say, well, You slowed down you. while we were racing. Yeah. That sounds like a load of bullshit. Dude, I'm not what? doing the Jesse from Fast and Furious. I just slowed down so that you could see what the view was like without my, my car was in front of you. clearly superior. Oh, come on, dude. Clearly superior. Dude. What this here was so much. This is a proper track car. This is a proper track car. Oh, dude, don't start. This has semis on don't it. Don't start. A race bucket, a dude, harness. This has got semis on it. I didn't even need my seatbelts because you weren't going fast enough for me to require my race seatbelts. I just wore the normal one. Come on, man. 
Are you tripping? No, and I let you go past because I you felt did. sorry for you. <laughs> I feel sorry I for- I got past you twice. I felt sorry for you twice. Did you, oh, that's cute. Did you think you got oh past? God. Oh, sorry, man. Marty, so sorry. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, now I feel awkward. He thought that he got past me and um, uh, I feel bad now. No, no, you did get past. You're a good boy. You got past me. You were really good. Don't, don't really patronise me, mate. <laughs> I chopped the shit out of you because Nissan's a superior. You of all people should know this. Uh, you did. You did chop me. Yes, yes. I did chop you. Yeah, that was you fun, did. man. Sunset, sun setting, Japanese mountains, beautiful crispy day. It was amazing. Semis on your little micro. Well, and these gentlemen, name. what absolute legends, just handing the keys over. And then cruise home in FD. Amazing. Ooh, hard to beat that. The FD RX7 has truly cemented its place as one of the all-time great cars to come out of Japan. People often talk about dream cars, but I never fully understood what it meant. Now after taking this car through some stunning roads, taking it back to meet one of the Mazda engineers and having unique Japanese experiences, I realised those things are actually the dream and the car becomes a daily reminder of them. Racing my very own rotary powered sports car around a track in the mountains of Japan is something I'll never forget and I can't wait to put in the time and effort to make it even better when it's back home. Of course this car's not perfect, but what is? Isn't it the imperfections that make us human, the struggle, the discovery, and the adventure? We're constantly pushed towards this idea of a world where comfort is the primary objective. But we don't need comfort. We don't need algorithms telling us who they think we are, what we should believe in, and what we should buy. We thrive when we have purpose in the face of adversity. We thrive when we use our hands to build, invent, fix, and fight for what we believe in. We thrive when we protect the things that are important to us. We don't need a digital life, a virtual universe, or a metaverse. We just need to be ready to take the first step into the unknown. And that is when the real journey begins. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the world is changing. Cars are becoming more autonomous, more safe, more reliable and more comfortable. More boring. But not everyone's looking for that. Sometimes, maybe we'd all be better off behind the wheel of a rotary. Or on the side of the road together, trying to fix one. Caminari no yoni, namiga a cheer, sir.